Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Canadian SME Business Magazine's series called Canada Business Talks. This is an up-close and personal interaction with Dr. Mohamed Faki. We are so fortunate to be surrounded by so many giants in business that are clearly expressing a desire to pour in and invest in an upcoming generation of business leaders and to support those who are currently in business. Now we will begin our webinar in approximately two minutes, but we did want to take the time to welcome everybody. If at this time you have not as of yet registered uh, for, for the magazine, feel free to do that, canadiansmemagazine.ca. Go to our website, you can certainly register to air, so I'm sorry, subscribe, and you'll be able to receive our magazine that way. Now, this is an opportunity to level up your business with an up close, as we mentioned, and personal interaction, which means at the end, we are reserving the last 10 to 15 minutes just for you all to be able to ask as many questions as possible. So please use the chat function and feature and enter in your questions and we'll be sure to get to as many as possible. Now, these business leaders that we have carefully selected add more value than simply your accounting spreadsheet. The inspiration in their stories, like Dr. Mohammed's that you're about to hear, will literally, we're, we're hoping anyways, will inspire you to do the greater things that you always thought that you could do through your business. Now, Canada Business Talks is for people whose vision remains to innovate how business is conducted. Now, whether you're an apprentice, small business owner, a career professional, or an entrepreneur, this is for those who are looking for proficient guidance, experience, and insight in how to grow your personal empire. Now, today with Dr. Mohammed, we're here to learn what it truly takes to be a resilient leader. Now, when you hear his story, uh, it's something that you know we're, we're all really excited about, but I won't steal any of his thunder. I'll certainly let him describe that for himself. My name is Shiraz Sadiq. I am a consulting editor with Canadian SME Business Magazine. So for about 20 years, I've been actively training, teaching, and public speaking in both the academic and corporate space. To do that, uh, specifically to help elevate the sales performance of those all around me. And we've had a lot of successes. So if you're looking to grow the sales skills of your team or your skill set, be in touch. We'd like to thank our sponsors today, RBC, who is our exclusive banking partner, our gold sponsors, which are Rico Canada and UPS, and our silver sponsor, Nerds On Site. And Carmela has joined us this morning. And now, just before uh, Carmela shares, we wanted to quickly let you know that Nerds On Site, who is one of our sponsors for this event, they've recently partnered with Staples Canada, and they'll be the exclusive they'll be exclusive partner with with Staples Canada across the country, offering mobile IT support whether you're small, medium, for small and medium sized enterprise. Now they're doing this in Canada and eventually across the USA. We're just really uh, excited for our partners, Ray, Reagan, and, and congrat congratulations everybody on at, at Nerds On Site. Now, as we mentioned, our, our uh, sponsor today is RBC and joining us from RBC is Carmela Trombetta. And let me let, I just, I'll fill you in a little bit about her story. Now she was born and raised in Hamilton, but what's really unique about her story, not only was she born and raised, she attended school in Hamilton, went to McMaster. But wait, there's more after that. She started off at RBC at the, at the Barton location, moved to the King Street location, and from there has continued to serve her community. So when we say born and born, raised and bred to serve her community, that's Carmela. Now in the past, she's, she's chaired the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce, she is in her current capacity, she's a VP of the Hamilton Commercial Financial Services Division of RBC, RBC Royal Bank of Canada. Now she's known for her passionate and collaborative approach as a leader. That's really her reputation. Now, if, you, if it sounds like I'm puffering her up way too much, I got more that I could share, share with you about her, but I'll let Carmela share some of her thoughts. Welcome, Carmela. Good morning. 
Thank you so much, Russ. Um, yeah, my, my name is Carmela Trombetta, and I'm really, um, really, really pleased to be here on behalf of RBC to welcome you to uh, Business Talks hosted by Canadian SME Magazine. Um, thank you for that lovely introduction. Don't believe any of it. Um, <laughs> I really just love uh, my organization. I'm, I'm privileged. I can't believe I get paid for what I do. Um, it's just incredible, and it's been over 31 years, so you know it's a win-win. Anyway, so I'm um, so glad to be here this morning and just honored to be in, in the uh, company of such uh, esteemed individuals. So since 2020, yes, almost, well, probably over a year today, March of 2020, COVID-19 has disrupted our economic, social and personal lives at an unprecedented speed and scale. And the uncertainty and upheaval is weighed heavy on many Canadians uh, I'd like to say Hamiltonians in there for sure, including a disproportionate number of small business owners and entrepreneurs today. And, and I do feel this leading the business community and, and all of our business customers at RBC. Um, but also what we've known in, the, in Canadian entrepreneurs is that they've been most resilient and passionate. And they are truly the backbone of our economy through the years of prosperity and as well through challenging times like these today. The current uncertainty that business owners are facing about reopening reminds us of the road to recovery and the long road and the challenging times that are still ahead as we, as, as our business customers really adopt to new expectations, all the operational parameters and financial realities of the aftermath of COVID-19. And it's a critical time now more than ever that governments and financial institutions, business and Canadians stand together to support one another, one another for sure, as we emerge out of this and emerge stronger, hopefully. Uh, for that reason, RBC's continued commitment to supporting Canada Business Talk series feels that much more important and purposeful today. Beyond the critical financial support and relief needed to get back on your feet, we know that it's equally important for businesses to hear about different perspectives, stories, resources, and tips to help navigate entrepreneurship in this very, 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 very difficult world that we live in today. And we're thrilled to see the Canadian SME magazine take a leading position of thought leaders, bringing entrepreneurs and our co-sponsors together, Lenovo, Cisco, to create an important forum. We hope these engaging conversations will deliver great insights and inspirations to help successfully navigate a post-COVID future, and there will be one. And through these discussions, we hope that Canadian entrepreneurs can find strength in knowing that you're not in this alone, and that there's a sense of community through these forums and other, other forums that you can participate in. So for today's ex event, we're really excited to have Dr. Mohammed, President and CEO of Paramount Fine Foods, join us to share his journey as an entrepreneur. Founded in 2006, Paramount Fine Foods is all about bringing the love of Lebanon to the rest of the world by challenging perceptions about Middle Eastern culture and cuisine. Sometimes we think that because it's written, it will happen. And for those of you who know Dr. Fahi, either in person or by reputation, you know that that's not the way he operates. He doesn't just say he's working to change perceptions about Middle Eastern culture and cuisine. Every day in his actions, through his actions, he works to make that change a reality. In addition to, business, to his many business achievements, he's created employment opportunities for new Canadians. He's contributed to local and international refugee and homeless causes. And more recently, he's made contributions to COVID-19 pandemic aid by donating meals to homeless encampments, women's shelters, frontline workers, food banks, and others in need. I look really forward to hearing about how he lives up to the words of wisdom that guide him and including his response today and, and what he's going to share with us around the challenges of the current environment. 
So once again, I'd like to thank Canadian SME Magazine, our co-sponsor and our co-sponsors, and to all of you for joining us for this program that uncovers and celebrates inspiring stories and all the individuals like Dr. Fahid who make them so real. So with that, I will close it over and, and hand it over back over to you, Shiraz. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Carmela, and thank you for what you're doing to support the small business and medium-sized business in the greater Hamilton area. Now, listen, if you are experiencing a, a scenario in which some advice would be good for you, please reach out to her team, and they'll be more than happy to continue to do what they do, and that's to support businesses in the greater Hamilton area. And I don't necessarily need to in introduce our, our our guest now. Thank you, Carmela, for doing such a fantastic job. I appreciate that. You, you make my job so much easier. There are a couple of things that I will highlight. Uh, not only is he the face of Paramount Fine Foods, but he is known for so much more. And this gives us that opportunity to be able to showcase and highlight what has got Dr. Muhammad to this point in his business journey. Oh, and he's not done yet. There's so much more to come. Ladies and gentlemen, without much further ado, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Mohammed. Especially you, Carmela, what a great introduction. I mean, I think uh, you said everything I wanted to say. I think I could just uh, stop saying anything and we can take questions. That's it. Uh, no, thank you, thank you. RBC does a lot as well in the community and especially in Hamilton, I agree with you. Hamilton has like they've been impacted very badly and we will need to come together as a community to get a better recovery because Hamilton alone cannot do it. Dr. Mohammed, let's start. Uh, so you know that you're an inspiration. You know that you're a role model. Now, I wouldn't call you a superhero, but uh, certainly superheroes all have their origin story. They have their story about how they got their start. Sometimes the origin story has a bit of drama and trauma perhaps attached and a struggle that they overcame. Now, when we, we now, uh, we've had an opportunity to chat a number of times over the last couple of weeks. And when you began to share uh, about what you were doing before Paramount, that was fascinating. Can you share with us everything that you were up with? from a business perspective? What were you up to before 2006? Well, uh, Shiraz liked the idea when I told him that I'm a gemologist that sells shawarma. So, yes, I am. That's the truth. So I, uh, I, I did my degree in geology and uh, my master in gemology in Italy, uh, Carmela, just uh, to, <laughs> in Italy. And um, after that, I did a course with the uh, Italian Gemological Institute. And I was an expert of uh, diamonds. So I used to certify diamonds internationally until I came to Canada and uh, people won't give me a job. Uh, because I didn't have Canadian experience. So I had to work at the coffee shop uh, at night. And during the day, I had to work at the jewelry and diamond store for free to uh, validate my experience after years of working in Europe. And that's why, I mean, um, I invite every employer listening to us today to hire people because of their attitude, not because only of their skills, because you could gain skills but you can't change your attitude unless you really uh you're led and mentored by the right people and you're prepared to change that attitude and people always wonder and ask me how do you actually hire diverse and inclusive team and you hire them by attitude you don't hire them by skills yeah. only otherwise you will not find enough people with enough skills you're looking for why you will find enough people with the right attitude and there is no one more than the people who came here uh, like as immigrants and refugees and just arrived here that has better attitude to be hungry for success and to prove themselves. And that's what us employers are looking for. Someone ready to learn, hungry for success. The word hungry is very important in my life. I've been hungry from food, <laughs> lack of food, I would say. And I've been hungry to succeed and to prove that immigrants are the best thing happened to Canada. And this country is the best thing ever happened to immigrants. So, you know, going back in full circle, I had to work for free in a coffee shop, for free in a jewelry store, and work at night in a coffee shop to make my money, to prove myself and validate my experience. And I'm one of the people that I will continue advocating for newcomers 
not to have to do that. Thank you. And I think uh, you're moving into that story alone moves you into a little bit of superhero status. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, well, Can gonna... I use that with my son, Adam, and say I'm a superhero? Maybe he'll watch <laughs> what I do more because he only watches superheroes. <laughs> I'm not a superhero. We'll certainly get a sketch artist to make to make one of you. Let's see how that goes. Uh, let's rewind even further then. You mentioned Lebanon. You, yes. you, you've said a phrase repeatedly that I've heard you say very often, and that's running forward. Now, obviously, we are all under this COVID cloud, and it's impacted different people on a personal and business level in so many ways. You were describing a scenario of, yeah, but i kind of been here before. I remember what this is kind of like. And you dropped some knowledge and advice on those who were on the call with you that day. And you began speaking about running forward. Can you describe how that, what that principle is and then how we can take away from that as we navigate these challenging times from what you experienced in Lebanon? Yes, and that's so great. It ties very well together with where we ended in the first question, uh, hiring diverse and inclusive team with different experiences not necessarily the same experiences because when they have all the same experience, we will not get anything new and we will not face uh, difficulty and adversity in a different way and have a different plan because everyone came from the same school and from the same past. So I, I lived in a civil war. We've lived many weeks in bunkers. We used to look forward for the morning to come and we used to live in those bunkers, but at the same time, we always knew that the light is gonna come one day. And I'll never forget the face of my dad. He'll smile after, and, and I actually literally remember the steps out of the bunkers, me and him, him holding me with his own hand and saying, I can't wait so we can open more businesses and build, build our country again and hire more people. And look, I've learned it the old days. Uh, we were in a village in Lebanon and there was no bread, no flour. My older brother used to drive to another city to get flour. And my mom and dad built a little oven outside. And we used me and my brother to bake for the whole little village where we live when we ran away from the capital. So we didn't bake for us. We baked for everyone. Mm. And I learned if you have a loaf of pita, there is enough to feed everyone a little bit is better than feeding only you, mm. right? So I've learned that. And I've learned that you get only supported and you get only blessed and you only can get your wealth bigger when you give someone else, when you help someone else. You'll get more supported. Good people wants to work with you and great people wants to support your business. To me, the pandemic and that difficult time, you need to deal with them when it comes in business especially a bit like a shark and a bit like a goldfish to survive the shark must always keep moving forward always forward and a goldfish has a very short memory just a few seconds so it's never going to be falling into the trap of getting nostalgic of how things used to be a, a shark and a goldfish we need to move forward and we only need to remember the people we lost and need only to remember how to learn from the mistake we made. But we can't live in the past. We need to keep moving forward. And when I sat down in this boardroom, around this time last year, and my team came to me and said, let's cut, let's put people at home a little bit, maybe rotate them. Let's just stop our expansion. I said, leave me 48 hours alone. That was the biggest test, Shiraz, to our culture. A culture mm -hmm. is tested and people are tested in difficult times. You find out who your friends are. You find out who your partners are. You find out your culture if it was real or lip service in difficult times. And we see a lot of lip service of philanthropy. We see a lot of lip service of culture. But I can't tell my team, we are one family for 15 years, then COVID hits and I'll fire my son. But if it was my family member for 15 years and I tell them that, I tell them that's my culture. 
how can I say, why don't you sit home a little bit? Hmm. Right? So, and let me tell you something. COVID, despite the people I, we lost in this beautiful country, and that reminded me of the war in Lebanon, it did hurt me. I went to a dark place in the first two days because I didn't want to see the people that they were the most generous. And I appreciate so much and forever in my life, the Canadians, that they're so generous to me and to my life, giving me my biggest opportunity, seeing them dying in circumstances like this. And that has got out of me, the immigrant and the refugee experience. Wow. Where we say we're going to always go forward. Where we say this is our time to shine and stand by the country that stood by us, by the people of the country that stood by us. And that's what got me to actually leave my house, see my kids through a glass window and live in a hotel for me to be able to cook for the homeless and show up for my team and say, I'm not asking you to show up to work alone. I'm going to be beside you. I'm going to be here with you. I'm going to wash dishes with you. I'm going to serve sandwiches with you. But please allow me three hours so we can go and help the rest of the community, the customer that supported us. And look, Shiraz, we had to drop our prices because we realized that Canadians needed us and they needed their dollar to buy them more. So in April, we launched Dare to Care Many. We dropped our prices because we had said goodbye to the profit. We're not going to make a profit. So if we're not going to make a profit, why don't we share that loaf of bread that we have? and make it feed more. And that $10, instead of buying only one plate, why doesn't buy a plate and a hummus? We actually dropped our our prices and to every entrepreneur out there, the sales went up. The sales went up because Canadians and humans support only companies that support the community when the community needs it. And people remember. I'm going to interject here for a quick minute. You have been all over the news over the past few months uh, for your philanthropic endeavors, uh, for preparing meals 500 at a time. Now, somebody could easily say, well, he has restaurants, of course, 500. Does anybody really know what it takes to prepare 500 meals at a time? That is ludicrous and all to give away, to, to, to donate. Now, the thing that comes with good work, it good, it gets attention. But you didn't do this for the attention that came with it. You did this because of two things that you mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago, or, or uh, maybe a few days ago. You spoke about generosity, and you spoke about gratefulness. Now you're introducing a, a concept that we need to speak more out of. More of Americans are great at speaking about the American dream. You know what? It's our time to profile, and we're going to start with you, uh, the Canadian dream. Can you share more about us? I made a mistake, Carmela. I st- I live in Mississauga, so does Muhammad, and uh, I, I I I I didn't I inadvertently said something negative about Mississauga. That wasn't my intent. I was just celebrating Beaverton, where one of Muhammad's colleague, <laughs> colleagues lived. All I said was, "Man, that's a great that's God's country out there." Oh, Muhammad got on me. He's like, "No, Mississauga is the best." That pride. Mama, can you describe what the Canadian dream means and what we should do about that? Yeah, I love Mississauga for sure, no doubt. And But I love Canada and I love its people. I truly love Canada and its people from my heart. Like, I would defend this country for whatever it takes. Honestly, for whatever it takes. And... As someone that lived in country that always we thought of the American dream, I think we should, and we don't often speak of the Canadian dream, but we should, because the American dream is about the self, the individual. It's about striving for riches and the comfort they bring. Even the symbol of the dream, you know, the white picket fence. It's about separating some people from others. In Canada, we don't build walls. We build the futures. So what should be the Canadian dream? It should be a dream for us all, not only for ourselves. It should recognize that Canada works best when its people work and live together in community and respect to each other. And when we, sh- we stand together in good times and bad like now, and when we speak together in opposition to hate and those who try to divide us, and when we join together in building a country where intolerance is pushed, to the farthest of fridges and shouted down each and every time it raises its voice. 
Like that's my vision of our Canadian dream. We are people from different colors, religions, and backgrounds are represented at all levels of government. They're not only allowed at certain level of employment and government, that the opportunities available to them, regardless of their color of skin, their religion, and their accent. That's my Canadian dream. And I think we could teach that dream to the rest of the world. Thank you for, for, for sharing that. Uh, uh, before we continue, I want to encourage everybody, if you have any questions that you would like to ask, please put them in the chat now. We're certainly looking through and we've received a number of great questions. And in about 10 minutes, we'll begin to answer some of your questions. So please, we wanna encourage everybody, go ahead and drop your questions in the chat and our moderator will ensure that we have them available for everyone. Now, uh, you said something about different backgrounds. No one would think, uh, let me rewind a little bit. I, Carmela, I saw the most amazing birthday card ever. And I only saw it this year for the first time. It was an eight foot high by 12 foot wide ice wall that this gentleman had etched a uh, happy 100th birthday, Hazel McCallion, something, something like that, and put it on her front lawn. Now, you talk about not necessarily odd couple, but no one would really think that Mary Hazel uh, is one of Muhammad's staunchest supporters and mentor. Can you describe that relationship that you have with Mary Hazel? More importantly, how did that come about? Because I bet you there's somebody on this call that thinks they would love to have a great mentor in their life. How did you go ahead and make, there it is, and hopefully you can see that image there. That's uh, Muhammad with his mentor, Mary Hazel. And look at that, that's a birthday card. Uh, I mean, after I showed my wife that, I I'm done. I'll never be able to do anything better than that, ever. <laughs> I'm gonna need your help, Muhammad, when her birthday comes Please. around. Now, uh, can you share with people on the call, how did you go about engaging the process of having her in your life to be a valid voice that you listen to and she listens to you? How did that happen? Thank you very much for the question. Um, Hazel McCallion for me, is a family and you know I check on her twice to three times a week. She checks on my kids as well. I mean, I'm very honored. I'm, 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 I'm mostly lucky and blessed to have Hazel McCallion as a mentor and a friend to my family and a family member to me personally. I, my heart feels Hazel when she calls. And, you know, Hazel used to come to the first Paramount. That's how I met her the first time. I'll never forget, Paramount was like four or five tables when I started. And she used to sit on a bench, like uh, her back to the wall and looking at me, watching me, uh, running around, cleaning tables, welcoming people. And when I come to her table and I say, Mayor, is there anything I can do for you to make your experience? And she used to say, kid, you're going to be something big one day. And I said, Hazel... How do you see that? I'm a gemologist that decides to actually sell food. And I don't know I, even how to fry an egg. Like, it's all confusing in my life. If you look at the business life of planning to all these great accounting firms and everything, like how is this guy who was a gemologist decide to sell shawarma and he doesn't know anything about food. And now you're telling me it's going to be something big. He always said, it's not about what you sell. It's about how much you believe in it and how happy you are to do it. And it's so true. And if you ask any politician in this country, there is one word Hazel is known for. Do your homework. And she has, and the only reason all the politicians know about that word because she has told them that probably <laughs> to their face. And that taught me two things. Be honest. It doesn't matter who is person in front of you or what position. Politely honest, but always be straightforward and honest. And do your homework. I learned this from her a lot. Because she always said, do your homework. The process how you go to get a mentor is based on the policy. If you want something done, you do it yourself. But interview your mentor like your mentor are allowed to interview you. And I got to know Hazel McCallion. I got to know her very well. And we had a date. Every second week, we had a dinner or lunch together. Where I, I actually sometimes used to say, can I tape you when you're talking to me? Because I love, I love listening to her again and again. You know, look, when I do something, I do it until it hurts. When I love something or someone or our country, I'm ready to do it until it hurts. When I decide to give, and to everyone out there, 
when you do something, if you want to make a real difference in life and business in the community, you need to do it until it hurts. And when my love to Hazel, I love her until it hurts. Yes, I do, because I'll go and I'll listen to that tape when she allowed me to tape her. And I'll listen to it many times and I'll ask her more questions. But it came very organic. And it came with a real love, genuine relation where I ask, I worry about her. Then I ask her a question. Then I ask her, why did she support that politician? Then I ask her, why did she take that position? And slowly, slowly, we grew that relation to everyone knows that Mohammed doesn't think of Hazel as a mayor only, doesn't think she's a trailblazer only, doesn't think that she has changed our life only. He actually truly believes that she's very important and she's a family member and she has touched my life like a million of people's life. So how can you not respect someone that their action has not only changed my life, even it changed the way everyone's life is looked at in Mrs. Saga. And she's been an example for women in business, women in leadership, women, and not only women in leadership. I'm proud to say she has changed my life and taught me a lot too. And I wanted to make that birthday different for her. And not because of what happens. I brought, we brought that ISIS culture. One of my senior advisors name is not only one, he's the only one, is Andrew Bevin. He's a friend before he's being a senior advisor. And I kept saying, what can we do? Something lasting, because she's probably not feeling good. Usually her her birthday is a great thing. And it lasts two, three months. People celebrate her birthday and we all show up to her house and we do something big. And that means a lot to her. And I know that for a fact. So he said ISIS culture, and it was an amazing idea. So I don't want to own the credit of this idea. I mean, I'm usually, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who has a face for a radio and don't have even the greatest idea. But to everyone out there, you don't have to be the best at everything. You know, surround yourself with people smarter than you. Please, please surround yourself with people smarter than you. And the second please will be listen to them. Because a lot of people hire great people, but don't listen to them. So please surround yourself with people, know what you don't know first, surround yourself with people that can cover that, bridge that gap that you have and listen to them. Before we continue, because there's been a lot of knowledge and insight that you've <laughs> dropped on us. And what I want to do is just really quickly uh, just uh, consolidate some of our learnings. And I, I have five H's that I've written down. Uh, to let me see if this encapsulates some of our first, or, or, you know, the first half of our conversation. Now we're going to move on, and that the and just working in reverse order. Uh, don't be afraid to get help from people who are smarter and better than you, because we can all use some help in whatever you do. Go hard. Go all in whatever decision that you make. Uh, leeching from uh, from Mayor Hazel. Uh, do your homework. You're supposed to know what you're getting into to mitigate risk. Do your homework. Another element that you shared is be honest, not only with others, but with yourself. Know your capacities and what you're capable of doing. And then back to another word, H, work hard, even if it's at a, at a coffee shop at night, to demonstrate that you have the skill set. And finally, the story of you walking out of that bunker with your dad, that fifth H, hope. Always believe that you can and you will achieve. Never let go of hope. So, so far we have five H's. Let's see how many more we can get to. But so far, uh, th- th- those are five H's. Now, w- we just want to take a um, uh, a question at, at this point, and then we'll get back to some of our programming. But uh, what's one piece of practical advice? I mean, clearly, I'm inspired. Like, I want to go build my shed, right? Like, I want to do something amazing. Uh, but can you give me a practical or share with the audience a practical piece of advice when they're just starting out? I think the best way is to really find a mentor. And look, a lot of people wake up in the morning and look at the mirror and every morning they have a great idea, right? And they call that idea great. This is a problem. And you need to validate your number if it's a business. So you have a great idea, that's fine. But don't call your idea great until the numbers make sense. And so that's very important in business. And the best way is to validate your business ideas. And a lot of other things in life is have different mentors, find mentors, 
mentors bridge the gap. They want nothing from you and their gain is, and the gratification they get is by seeing you succeed. So have mentors, surround yourself with great mentors, always. I've had always mentors. They've changed over the years and even their knowledge and the kind of mentors I pick has changed. But mentor had made me faster know exactly what I want mm -hmm. and know exactly what I don't know as well, which is part of key to success is knowing what you don't know, right? Because that will manage your <laughs> ego and two, gets you to understand the kind of knowledge that you need to look for, right? And I, I'm for one, I followed in all my life <laughs> the 4P process in my business. So I have a culture that based on 4Ps. People. So a lot of people come to me and say, they want to start a conversation, Shiraz. Even people I don't know, they just say, hey, Mohammed, I just want to tell you, customer always comes first. Mohammed, customer always, always comes first. You know what, Shiraz? No, not to me as a CEO. People come first to me. Right? My people come first. Because when you look after your people, then your people will look after your customer. Mm -hmm. So to everyone out there, the world has enough money and investors looking for great ideas. And great ideas come from great talent. If you don't look after your people, someone else will. If you don't look after your employee and you make them treat like they're part of the creation, not just an employee, right? And you find them a reason and that's where the second P come, that they're always a proud of. They will leave your core company. People that makes more than $60,000 or $70,000, they wanna stay in a company, not only for the money. They need a reason bigger than themselves. And the only reason bigger than all of us is community and purpose. And that's the second P. So people comes first, purpose comes second. In today's market, Shiraz, people will not support companies that do things against the planet. People will not support companies that doesn't worry about their employees. And if you are a company that worries about your community, people will support you more often. You know, Shiraz, how many people call me, contact me and say, you know, we come more often to Paramount, not only because of the food, because of what you do with the community. So actually it's not only the right thing to do is even the profitable thing to do. It keeps your staff more excited and energized. It keeps your customer loyal and it gives you that best feeling on earth. I always say the best feeling on earth is when you, I'm not gonna say that I changed someone's life, but I'm sure every time we do something to someone in need, we make their day better. And that's not only good for them, it's even good for you, the person doing it. And one more good comes out of it. It's good for the community. And when you asked a question around five minutes ago, you were talking about, do I do it for the media? Do I do it for that? You know, the only reason I like the media, because we become what we celebrate, Shiraz. As a community, we become what we celebrate. And we need to celebrate more what we want more of. So if we want kindness, we, we need to celebrate kinder people and kindness. We need to stop celebrate the richer only for their richness and for their success in making money. There is a, we need to celebrate kinder people. We need to celebrate more acts of philanthropy. We need to... And I'll tell you why I, I, I like the idea that the media, I like the idea when the media profile something like this, because it's very important for raising more money and helping more people. Mm. So you can't do a fundraising and keeping it secretively, even in every religion, the Muslim and the Christian and the Jewish religion, there is more blessing by doing something good secretively, by helping somebody without telling anybody. But in our world today, where kindness needs to be something more part of the corporate culture and the family culture and everything, 
I need, we need, we need more to celebrate kindness. We need more to give people, people, a lot of people, especially Canadian are so generous. I'll tell you from my trip in Lebanon, when I went to help Lebanon after the explosion, Canadian came and came together with me and we helped Lebanon all together. But people, they're looking for ways to do it properly. And by you putting it out there to people and especially building a trust, they'll want to do it more and more people will get the idea. Yeah, maybe we need to be kinder. I think truly one of our solution of the world the problem today is having more good people doing good things. Okay. So that's my second P. Mm -hmm. And the third P is planet. Nobody supports a company that doesn't look after the planet and don't act responsibly. And the fourth P, if you want, I think I see profit as destination. And to get to profit, the fourth P, you need to put people first, purpose, plan it to get to profit. And in the pandemic, we added the fifth P, which is pivot. I'm going to speak about another P. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is probably the largest P that you'll see in Canada. <laughs> Mom knows what I'm speaking about. In Mississauga, there used to be a facility known as, it's where the Raptors 905 team plays. It's called the Hershey Center, or was called the Hershey Center. A couple of years ago, my uh, daughter was playing basketball, and as normal, we would take her to the Hershey Center for her practice, because again, the Raptor 905 team plays there. It's a, it's a premier facility. All of a sudden, we get a note that it is now called the Paramount Fine Fine Food Center. Food Center. Uh, it, I mean, to get to your four P's, your fifth P, but then to the largest P possible in Mississauga, there, there has, that, that, that has to be a record. Now, uh, Mom, can you describe the moment you sat in your car and can you describe what you were going through in your mind while you were seeing the crane hoist up that P? To everyone is a sign, it's a naming right, and we, we are responsible of the food inside. But to every, to me, and to a lot of people out there, look, I landed in Mississauga, in Pearson Airport with $1,200 in my pocket. And I talk about this and I get emotional every time. And this is the city where I landed with nothing. And now I'm putting the name Paramount and that P in Panama stands for purpose again, just to let you know. And, uh, uh, and no, the truth is the Paramount word itself is my team. You know, treating people well is Paramount for me. And treating my team well is Paramount. And the people, including the community, the people of the community. And, and my wife asked me a lot about that. And, and we'll get to that afterward. And, you know, that day when the opportunity came up, and, and to a lot of entrepreneurs out there, I'm gonna put you in that situation for two seconds. Number one, I thought Hershey is a multi-billion dollar company. Who am I? Can I even afford it? And at the same time, was going the Scotia Bank deal and we were talking about $800 million deal. And, and I'm like, okay, wait a second. $1,200 in my pocket I have here and I'm talking about putting my name in right. And you know, when the mayor said, yeah, it's possible, let's put it to vote and I'll do it this way and I'll give you the opportunity of food so you'll make up some of the money for the naming right. So the city has helped me a lot and not because it's me, not, it's not because it's me. That was what they were doing with Hershey, but Hershey they didn't do food, right? So we did the food as well to make it better, healthier as well. And like putting the name of my company on top of that important building you know, was so proud. It was a very emotional. Like, I mean, it sends a message to every immigrant that everything is possible in this beautiful country. And you could do it while still being the same person that first step off the plane at Pearson without changing yourself. And despite the heavy accent I have, and my name, Mohammed, coming from Lebanon, I don't have a lot going for me with those three things, right? Don't let your accent stop you or let you take your great idea to the grave because of where you came from. You know, the opportunity is available in this country for all of us, for everyone. And it's 
unlimited. So yeah, I woke up at 4 a.m. I knew they're putting the sign. I drove there, bought a Timmy's to make it 100% Canadian. And I cried when they put that sign up. I, I couldn't stop myself by crying, seeing my name on a building that big. And what it represents to all the kids growing up. And yeah, last night, my son said it. Paramount Fine Food Center is a vaccination center. I said, yes. He said, we're blessed. People will remember for life that they got their vaccine at the Paramount Fine Food Center. And you know, to everyone out there, I know it's a nice conversation and the great words to say, but everything I say is what I live, I promise you. It's not what the Paramount sign says to everyone and every other company. To me, it's not how much money you have, it's what it does and what difference will make to other people's life. What not, not what knowledge you do you have, it's what knowledge you share with other people's life and you mentor other people and you set an example to other people. And that sign by itself, it wasn't what the sign says, it says what's behind the sign says, that immigrants are welcome here and not only welcome to exist, they're welcome to be striving and celebrated. And we need to continue to celebrate them because we become what we celebrate. We need to celebrate everyone. I think what I want to be celebrated is celebrate each other's celebration, celebrate each other in general, but most importantly, celebrate the kindness that everyone presents. Doesn't matter how much money you have. To everyone out there, we wanna celebrate more kind people than rich people. Thank you for what you've been able to do for us so far in this call. And what I just heard you say is that actions, not accents, really speak on your behalf. So thank you. And if that means anything to anybody on this call, then uh, um, you know, uh, continue to let your actions, not your accent, speak on your behalf. Now, uh, uh, it, we, we have a couple of questions coming in. So if you're ready, we're just gonna go off the cuff here. Uh, if you mentioned your last P is pivot. Now, if you could do something different in how you have ran your organization in the past, maybe over the last year, maybe over the last few years, what would you do differently? Look, I mean, it's typical for people to say, I learned this from the, these mistakes. Of course I did, but I didn't have to learn from a lot of mistakes because I counted on very good people, smarter people than I am. My team is much smarter than I am in the food and beverage industry. They have much bigger experience than I do. And that was from the beginning. I always counted and paid to everyone out there for 10 years of my life. I had people paid salary higher than me, higher than my money being pulled yearly. Like I used to pay my team better than I did to build a company bigger and better. So, so don't ever cut corners in how much you pay your team and how you treat them well and do not compare them to you. They're better than you and they're, your way to success is through them and through your community for sure. So uh, I'll do things differently. Maybe try wait longer uh, before I start the franchising, you know, because four locations were not enough to validate. Uh, you know, my first maybe uh, franchisee, I could have prepared more help for them, but I end up definitely helping them the, at the end. And it would have been much and a smoother uh, thing. And I would have actually opened up and showed up for the community at bigger level earlier. I was always showing up for the community, even when I didn't have money, but at a very smaller level, right? So I, I've, I've been having this target of moving and setting an example to other entrepreneurs and changing the way CEOs look at. I've been always having that goal. I want CEO not to be looked at as a robot or people with no feelings and people that they're not. I want CEO to be looked at, looked at like they're kinder, they're mentors, uh, they're your friends, and they're the people that private, private companies have a big role to play into our recovery. And I want us as CEO to show our kindness, uh, show our partnership to the community and show that. And I should have started earlier but I think I'm pressing gas to accelerate and hopefully I'll make it up. While you're pivoting and while you're reading in reverse and looking in the rear view mirror, uh, what helps you keep your focus maintained on the goals and your targets ahead of you? Like fundamentally, what are your principles that help you maintain your blinders so you can achieve your vision? Uh, we, we are very organized organization. So we go to a 
something we call the castle, uh, Airbnb. Uh, we, we, we rent a big home in Blue Mountain or different places. And all the team of executive with the frontline heroes, which is importantly to have your frontline heroes included on the table. A lot of companies sit all the executive and they high five because they reach a decision that the frontline hero are not involved in it and doesn't impact them. But this is the people, people that you're, 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 you're influencing with that decision. They should have been on the table. So I send them all a night before me and we always review a stop, start, continue list. What we should stop doing, what we should start doing, and what we should continue doing. And we review our vision and our mission and how far are we from our, what, what, what I always, uh, I want people to use is noble mission. What is the noble mission of the company? And we, that's how we align ourselves. And from there, we get always, every year, twice we do this. And it gets us to spend time together and go for a jog in the morning. And the day after I follow them, because I want them to build it. And I want them to defend it against me instead of, if I was in the beginning, everything I say, all of them are going to say, you're right, you're right, because I'm the CEO simply, right? So I want them to build it without me. Then I'll come and I'll ask them a question about it and it'll become their creation. So they're defended and they will work very hard to execute it. And there's nothing better for me as a CEO than that, right? So that's one point that is very important point. And the second thing is the kids, the children, the look in the eyes of the children, of my team, and the, my team themselves, having and being part of a company that does something bigger than us all, and the eyes of the people we help every day, gets me so energized to want to succeed more, stay focused more, achieve more so I can help more. Because my happiness does not come from my bank account. And to everyone out there that believe that giving back makes you poorer or comes out negative from your bank account, giving back makes you richer. It gets people to support you and your product. It gets you more money. It gets your talent not to leave you. You will not cost your retraining more. Giving back to the community, supporting your country, it gets you wealthier. And I can prove it by numbers. So generosity has fed growth for you. Absolutely. And continue doing, like, what do we do? Why, why do you do what you do? You want to be happy. Okay. So you need to understand what makes you happy. What makes me happy every morning, it gets me excited about the day that is booked on my calendar to do charity and to put in someone's, someone, <laughs> change someone's life even for that day, right? So... And that's what makes me happy. Money doesn't make people happy, what you do with it. Carmela and I were chatting uh, the other day and, and one of the things that we were discussing, I'm sure you remember this, Carmela, we were talking about uh, what advice we would give to business owners that are struggling right now. Uh, it's great to say, you know, be generous. It's great to say, stay strong in your mind and stay focused. And she was sharing with me some of the things that RBC does and what she does personally. We wanted to hear from you as well. Uh, what advice would you give to a business owner that legitimately is having a hard time? Look, the people we couldn't save in this pandemic as business, not alone the people that lost their life that really hurt my heart and all of us for sure. But the people in the businesses we couldn't save in the pandemic, you know, a lot of them initially were not in a steady stage or they were at the startup stage. And it's very sad that we couldn't save them. But we do mm. not want like the shark and the goldfish. We do not want to live there. We want to try to help them to come back to business. And we want to make sure that we do not discourage people from getting to business because of the pandemic, right? But all what that means is we need to build differently. And we need to build in a different way. To the people that they're struggling today, look, the government help has been great. I'm part of the 15 CEO, the Chamber, Canadian Chamber of Commerce Council, including the CEO of Pfizer, Kojiko, uh, WestJet. We're putting a recovery plan where we have a soft landing on recovery instead of a hard landing. And we're, we're heard very well by the federal and provincial government. So, and reach out, get mentors. Like if you're having, if you're struggling, call me and call other people smarter than I am. It's the time where 
I tell everyone listening here, don't support only PM. Support every other restaurant in the city too, right? It's the time where the industries need to come together. Banks need to come together. All of us, banks and industries need to come together. It's a time where we need to realize that we are, I wouldn't say, I, I, I like the idea of we're on one boat, we're in it together, but that didn't prove 100%, right? We have an opportunity where we can recover better and I'm not talking recover only economically, right? Us in a humane way, we can recover better and send a message that they're not alone, the people who are struggling. So please reach out, reach out and believe that the light will come. And think of the people that they got impacted more than you, that they don't have money to feed their children, that I meet them a lot every, like twice a week, I meet people that they look better than me and my family. And they're actually standing in line for food. Hmm. So always look at the bright side and, and do something good and get you energized to succeed more. Go help those people that need it more. So you realize that you're not that bad off and go and that will push you to move forward. And that's very important. And believe that that great day will come and we will greet it together and reach out. Reach out to mentors that they will help you, that they've had those experiences, like somebody like me that operated a business in a wartime, right? And that's where I say diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice. Include people. Include people in your organization that have different experiences so we can actually face times like this, difficult times, because those people were on them. They had those difficult times before and they maneuver in them. Dr. Mohammed Faki, Carmela Trombetta, and all our other esteemed uh, sponsors who were able to help bring his voice to life and share this. And of course, we'll be broadcasting this at a later time on across all of our platforms. So once again, we would like to thank our partners. Uh, Carmela, thank you. Thank you for being here, uh, representing RBC, but representing yourself because uh, I have a sense that a lot of what Mohammed uh, was sharing, you also share in that approach as well personally. Uh, to RICO, to UPS, to Nerds On Site, a lot of great organizations doing great things. And if you find yourself in that position where you need help, look for that hand of hope, just as Muhammad and his dad came out of that bunker and they picked it up and here they are this many years later. Look ahead, you'll be there as well. And you have two choices. Do you wanna be the hand that's holding someone else or the hand that needs to be held? Whatever your position is in business, you have that option and you have that opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Dr. Mohammed, thank you. This was fantastic. And me and Carmela, we've already made we, we've already made reservations at one of your at your one of your restaurants for coming for 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 the for the best pita bread that comes fresh out of the oven with the garlic sauce. Now, the garlic sauce, eventually you're gonna have to share that recipe with everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all of your support. And again, if you'd like to subscribe to the magazine, you can visit canadiansme.ca. Again, canadiansme.ca to sign up and subscribe to the magazine.